Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at the different types of research questions that are used in quantitative research. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So this video has two parts. We're going to be looking at knowing your different variables. This is kind of a brief cover of terms and ideas you find in statistics. And then of course, you're going to look at our three types of research questions, which are descriptive, comparison, and relationship. All right. Now when we're talking about variables, this is the thing that you're measuring that changes. So, um, and it's important to understand your variable type or whatever it is, because the type of variable that you're measuring, whatever you're collecting data on, whether it's height, weight, whether it's uh, class level, whether it's uh, type of book that people read or whatever, this determines, this affects the type of analysis that you can do. And so essentially, there are two types of variables that you're going to encounter. Yes, it can be more complicated than that, but for our purposes, we're going to talk about two. The first one is categorical, right here. And this is where you basically have a finite number of choices in which you can place a data point. So, for example, you might be looking at fiction books versus nonfiction, counting those. There are two categories. They could be a fiction book or they could be a nonfiction book, as an example. You might be looking at different types of cars, you know, Ford and Chevy, whatever. In other words, something cannot be half Ford and half Chevy. Either it's a Ford or it's a Chevy, period. There's no other way to separate those two types of data points or uh, two types of data that you're, you're collecting. So that's categorical, where you have a finite number of categories in which you can classify or categorize your data points. When you're talking about continuous data, the difference here, this is continuous, <coughs> excuse me, is when you have an infinite number of values that a particular data point can take. So an example would be height. Someone could be, for example, 156 centimeters tall, 156.5. Someone could be 150.3214, whatever. In other words, there's, there's so many different choices. It's an infinite number of choices that data points could be alone in like one category if you want to think about it like that. So this is very, very important because whether your variable is categorical or continuous, it affects the type of tools you can use for analysis. So for categorical, we can do frequency as an example. So we'll just put, whoa, whoa, that's crazy. Frequency, sorry. But for continuous, we might calculate mean as another way of dealing with things. So again, I don't want to get too deep into to the, the statistical aspects of this, but you get the idea. Now, uh, there's also looking at the relationship between variables. So relationships between variables can be the, you know, or independent variable and dependent variable. And again, this is getting more into regression, or if you're looking at two independent variables, how they move together, you're looking at correlation as an example. But this is why it is very, very important to understand how you're measuring something. And one of the most common questions I, I've dealt with as a teacher or as someone who's helping people do research is they're not sure how they're going to measure something. If you don't know how you're going to measure something, it makes it very difficult to shape the kind of questions you can ask and to determine the type of statistical tools you can use to produce your answers. Now, this screen right here is just a review when shaping your research questions. And again, you don't always have to put this inside the question, but it must be somewhere within your paper. So you always got to have your target population. You got to have your, your objective, your action. Your, your contribution or significance, and you have to define how you're going to measure something. So now we're going to move into the three different types of questions that you're commonly going to see. And yes, of course, you can have more than these three types of questions, especially if you get more into the data science side, machine learning side of things. There's, there could be up to like eight different types, but they're broken down into these three basic types in terms of like categorizing them. All right. So our first one is going to be descriptive question. So descriptive. And I think you guys know what descriptive means. It means you're trying to describe something. And so here's our template right here. Again, you don't normally ask questions in this particular style, but 
it'll just get us started. So how often do participants, whatever the variable is, at whatever the location is? <clears throat> so let's look at our example. How often do students, these are our participants, exercise? This is our variable at the university level. This is kind of our location. So the three parts are there. And so I'll get a number. So if I'm counting how often do they exercise, well, that, that probably just a count. You know, they, they exercise five times a week, 10 times a week. And so if I really want to tighten up this, this uh, question, I might want to put in like a, a time limit, like within one week, within two weeks, but let's not get stuck on the details. Let's just see that you can clearly see the three parts that are, that are needed for a descriptive question. Participants, variable, and research location. Now, here is something that's a little bit cleaner. The second example, what are students, here's our participants, perceptions of academic dishonesty? So this is our variable, so what do they think about it? At the university level, this is our, lo our location within Thailand during the 2022-2023 school year. So now I have a time limit here. And so now this is very clear. I'm looking at what students think about academic dishonesty over one academic year. Very, very clear. And again, with this one, perceptions, it all depends on how I measure perception. I could use Likert scales. Um, I could use categories. I, however I want to do it, I can do a count. It doesn't matter. But things are shaped up to where I can have success in terms of how I'm going to collect data and how I might want to analyze things. Let's move on. Now, comparison is when you're comparing two groups, two or two or more groups. So it could be like, you know, freshmen and sophomores or freshmen, and sophomores and juniors, whatever. But with comparison questions, you're looking at comparing the values of two different groups for whatever your purpose is. And again, you can measure things categorically or continuously, but I don't want to focus on that. So here's our template here, right here in the second bullet. How are or is group one different from group two in terms of whatever the dependent or independent variable is for participants at research location? So this is our template. And so here I kind of worded it, worded it a little bit differently down below, but all the main aspects are there. Is there a difference between men, this is our group one, and women, group two, in terms of the amount of exercise, this is our variable right here. For students, this is our participants, or you can say our target population, at university, this is our location. And again, I could put in a timeline if I want it, you know, over the course of a year or whatever. But all the parts are there. I'm comparing the means, uh, I mean, I'm comparing the amount of exercise between for a group of men and a group of women. That is how I'm separating them. So to give you a picture, this is my entire sample right here. And the sample is going to be divided into two groups. One group that contains men values and the other group that contains women's values. And so I'll calculate the amount of exercise that men have, whether it's frequency or whether it's mean or median, whatever. And I'll compare it to the corresponding value when I only have women. So it's like you're subsetting the data, if you're familiar with that term. I'm separating them based on whether they're a man or a woman. That's how I'm doing this. And so for students at university. Now the second example is a little bit cleaner and it has all the different parts of an excellent research question. How are men, this is our group one, perceptions of academic dishonesty, this is our variable, different from women. This is our second group here. At the university level within Thailand, this is our location uh, during the 2022-2023 school year. So you can see right here that we have things lined up in terms of we have a group one men, we have a group two women, we have a variable here, academic dishonesty, and we have a location, a university level within Thailand. And lastly, we have a, a, a time frame during the 2022-2023 school year as an example. All right, our last one is a relationship. And so this is where we're looking at, again, the association or the relationship between two different variables. This is different from comparison is that with comparison, we're looking at two different groups. Um, here, we're looking at 
two different variables. Now they're very similar and, and actually in reality they're the same thing most of the time because you know your groups can be a variable themselves. I hope I'm not confusing you with that but let's just focus on this example right here. So here's our template. How does the independent variable relate to or influence the dependent variable for participants at research location? So I just have one example here, a clean one. What is the relationship between students this is our participants right here. Perceptions of academic dishonesty. This is one of our variables here. And their academic confidence. This is our second variable. At the university level within Thailand during the 2022-2023 school year. So this is our location right here. And so all the parts are there. I got my participants. I got my two variables and I have my location. And so again, if you ask a question like this, it's giving you a hint or a clue into how you might want to analyze it. So again, I'm not going to get into the statistical aspects of this because that's not the purpose of this video. But when things are set up like this, it's very clear and it's very easy. Many times, um, the people who actually put together the, the study are not necessarily the people who are doing the st statistical analysis. So it's very, very important that if you are not the one doing the statistical analysis, that you set up clear research questions so that the numbers person does not have to struggle to determine what exactly it is you want to know. This can be very, very challenging. And I'm speaking from experience. People will have questions where it's very hard to find out what kind of answer they're looking for. And it could be very frustrating. All right. So in this particular video, um, we looked at variables. So you know there's different types of variables, whether they are categorical or continuous, whether the relationship between two variables is independent versus dependent or whatever. And we also looked at the three types of research questions that you're commonly going to see when you're doing social science quantitative research. Descriptive, where you're just trying to describe one variable or several variables, variables you know, looking at mean, median, mode, the distribution, etc. Comparison, where you're comparing two different groups. And of course, relationship, where you're looking at the association or how two or more variables move together. So, my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you so much for watching, and you take care.